Story 1 that should really say official D-Day. I know that these stories all sound the same and everyone here is probably sick of reading about it, but I'm feeling so lost and scared right now. For years ago, my fiancé started an emotional affair with a co-worker. It may have gone further, I'm not sure yet. She displayed all of the signs of cheating. Vanishing for hours, hiding her phone, changing pins, deleting everything, etc., I did some digging and the only proof I got was a couple of flirty messages. I found lots of circumstantial things, too. I confronted her at the time. I had to because she discovered my snooping. And I got made to feel like I was crazy. Denial and gaslighting abound. Everything seemed to die down and my medication kept me numb to the world so I could ignore it all. About a year later there was more suspicion so I confronted her again and got more denial but again everything stopped. I've been off my medication for months now so I'm not longer in a bubble and on Monday I discovered some suspicious clothing in front of her. She acted suspicious while I was finding it and gave an explanation for them which was plausible but it still played on my mind. Monday evening, I confronted her again and told her that I had found other things that made me know that her denials were lies. I revealed some of these details to get more information and she finally came clean. She told me that they were sending each other flirty messages and she has felt so guilty and bad for the last four years. It only went on for a couple of months and when she'd go out randomly it was to clear her head and cope with the guilt. On one of these trips, she just happened to bump into him and they talked for a while. Nothing ever happened on person because it felt weird. He sent her some naked pictures and despite her searching for ways to take naked selfies, she says she never sent any back. They both decided to break it off because they wanted to focus on their own relationships. When she told me, it was just about the flirting and the one time they met up. She explained her guilt and started crying so I had to comfort her. Obviously, I love her and I did that, but it just feels like I should have been the one being comforted at that moment. She is not good at opening up and speaking openly about things even with me after being together over 11 years. So, our main form of communication about this is via increasingly lengthy WhatsApp messages. She is answering my questions and has given me the whole story and is willing to answer questions where I am seeing inconsistencies. She is explaining her reasons for it all and how bad she feels. I want to try for reconciliation because I really do love her and if what she has told me is the truth then it's not actually that bad of a betrayal. The main thing that is affecting me about it are the lies and gaslighting. She insists that she wants to try or work it all out too but I am still feeling that if I push too hard or say the wrong thing then she will just give up on us. I know that this shouldn't be what I am worried about. She betrayed me and I have the control over staying or leaving. But I just have this rage and need to vent and tell her everything that I am feeling. However, that would be counterproductive and while I would feel good directly afterwards, I would feel much worse than this shortly after that. She is trying to open up and speak when I talk to her about things that are on my mind, but it's a slow process and I don't want to push too hard on that because it is progress after all. I have made a list of my needs and wants from her. I want to go through this list in person when we have space and time to do so. I will explain my reasoning behind each point and she can tell me her feelings even if she has to text that to me. She knows I have the list and has expressed fear that if she forgets to do something on there that it'll push me away, but I have explained that if she forgets to do something then it is okay, I know it'll be a massive change from her normal life and mistakes are bound to happen. She has been very supportive this last week and has informed me of things that may cause me distress if I didn't know about them. Now on to my own issues. In my past, I have been in a long-term emotionally abusive relationship. It ruined my personality and self-confidence. I know that the actions I need to take to feel safe and start trusting her again are going to be very controlling. But I just can't bring myself to do them. I have experienced this level of control and could never inflict it on someone I love even though I know that there is a reason for it. If you've read all of this then I thank you. Any advice or support would be really appreciated. Hi everyone. Thank you for the replies and the harsh truths. I do need to hear them. I'll just clarify a few things. I have taken all of the advice on board and am working on standing up for myself more. 
The last message I sent her told her that I'm not willing to continue with this lack of control and am stopping let her walk all over me. So, the emotional affair only lasted two to three months and it was four years ago. After my day then where I confronted her and was gaslighted, all of the weird activity stopped or was more well hidden. The activity a year or so later was him talking to her about some family issues and her comforting him. Apart from the initial two to three months and that second time nothing seemed to miss. Although this is her story and I am taking it with a grain of salt. She claims that it happened because she thinks she has body dysmorphia and that is why she had to Google how to take tasteful naked selfies and why she claims she never sent them. She claims that her searches for secret picture folder apps for her phone was because she wrote me a note explaining what she had done and wanted to send it to me, and when she knew I was going through her phone she screenshotted it and wanted to hide the picture. She claims that it only started because she was at a low point and couldn't open up to me about it, and despite all of my compliments to her and obvious attraction to her, she thought it was my duty as her fiancé to be like that, so when her co-worker who was technically her boss complimented her, she knew he didn't have to and liked the attention. I am obviously taking these claims with a grain of salt too. I have been in therapy for my past issues, and I am over the trauma however I am too much of a decent person to impose that type of control on anyone I love. Which is why I've been struggling. When it comes to reconciliation, I know it is quick however I have spent the last four years going over it in my mind repeatedly and picturing the worst case scenarios obsessively. If she is telling the truth about what really happened then it is far tamer than anything I had pictured so my feelings on the matter are severely conflicted. I will not be proceeding with any efforts to reconcile until I can be as sure as possible that she is being honest about the extent of it. Which I know I may never actually get as every bit of communication they had is gone. She is currently still working with him but claims that they aren't friends anymore and only talk about work stuff. She has just been promoted and I am conflicted about an ultimatum about leaving the job as I have no proper career due to my abusive ex and again, I am not capable of inflicting that kind of thing on someone I love. He and his girlfriend have split up. Last week I had checked their Facebook profiles out of curiosity as I did that every now and again and saw that the relationship status was now hidden. I got in contact with her and asked if she knew anything about the actions four years ago and she had no idea and has since set her Facebook status to single. She obviously confronted him as he messaged my fiancé the next day to tell her I had been asking questions. I have been shown these messages and he seemed more concerned with insisting that if anything comes out it wasn't due to him. Thankfully I had been told the story of what happened on Monday night and so I know that she didn't just tell me because of that fact. It definitely didn't feel like it was ongoing. When it started there was a vast change in her personality and actions. A couple of months later she was acting normal again. I'm unsure if that message means there is more to it or not. His ex works for the same company as them but in a nearby branch and I have been informed now that she is very opinionated and would have no problem telling everyone. So, it could have just been about if people at work find out. I'm pretty sure a superior sending naked pictures is a sackable offense. It also could have been that he was saying it's not his fault that I was asking questions. I only saw the conversation they had on WhatsApp and have no idea if he knows that I know everything I now do. Story 2 Feel Dead Inside Met at 15 years old, been together 26 years, married for 20. Hasn't been smooth sailing for most of it, but never infidelity in marriage. Both have felt life has created anxiety, stress, depression, kids, busy lifestyles. I have not been easy and not been the perfect husband, but I have never strayed in our marriage. Wife went away overseas three months ago and had one night stand with guy she met on the plane. Long story short about a week ago lost my phone so needed to make a call from hers. I saw Facebook message exchange on her phone and at first she said it was just dinner. But it didn't add up. I knew deep down and finally she confessed after my probing saying she didn't want to hurt me with the truth. She asked me to promise her that I would not leave her if she told me the truth. I want to make the marriage work and we start counseling in a week. She is very apologetic, crying, feeling worthless. It's never happened before but she was away, curious, she had company and one thing led to another. 
She is not a bad person. She is a wonderful mother and has been a good wife, but she has broken my heart. I will not break the family for the kid's sake. Please in no judging, but just looking for feedback to start the journey of rebuilding the relationship from scratch. Just devastated and feel such grief and loss. Appreciate all the feedback, but overreaction assumptions made. Wife was not away for three months. It was four days overseas, and the OM lives on another continent, so no continued A. Checked his Facebook, and he is single. The messages were only over three days three months ago. Was P.S. so no health risk. Definite ONS. Too many incorrect assumptions and judging. Trying to keep level head with feedback, but difficult. Thank you all for the feedback. So difficult to deal with. The why she did it. Our marriage has not been great for a while. I may have been disengaged emotionally for a while evacuee how we have treated each other, but I have never had sex with anyone during our 20-year marriage. I have been in situations where I could have, but I have not. I asked W if the other guy stayed the night, and she has now told me they fell asleep and did it again in the morning. She felt wanted and was nice to have attention. It's not like we don't have SX that irregularly, so it's the emotional breakdown, the anger that she has felt against me, and the attention that she was enjoying by OP offering dinner, conversation, curiosity. It's really no excuse. She told me she came back and tested for STD and was negative. Story 3, I man have been with my fiancé female for nearly 11 years. We got together in high school and have lived together for about 8 of those years. A while back I caught her texting flirting and spending time with a co-worker, but nothing got physical. Fast forward to about a month ago, and I catch her messaging someone that we met online playing video games. She said she was sorry, said she would stop messaging him, and I decided to leave it at that and move on. Over last weekend, she said she wanted to spend time with her friend that lives about an hour from us. She left Saturday night around 5 p.m. and got home 1 to 2 a.m. Monday morning. Well, I had sketchy feelings about the weekend from the start, but we had been together so long and I trusted her completely, so at the end I had no reason to not let her go. On Monday morning when I left, she asked me to grab her purse for her out of the car before I went to work. Well, sticking out of her purse was an airline ticket to Wisconsin with a male's name that I kind of recognized. It took me about 30 to 60 seconds to put it all together and I found out that he had bought her a ticket to fly up there and come see him. They spent Saturday night and Sunday together before she got back on a plane and flew home Sunday night. Her timeline of the trip is as follows. She was picked up at the airport and brought to a hotel that he purchased her a room in. They spent some time together in the room watching TV and talking before he left her for the night. He picked her back up the next morning and proceeded to show her around town, eating lunch, then eventually bringing her back to the airport. She claims they hugged and she was weirded out and uncomfortable about the whole situation. Long story short, I asked her to cut all communication with him if we are going to try to work this out, she said she would. However, she continues to text him and talk with him. I even found out this morning that she texted him and picture of her with her ring off. I think that really was the last straw for me, it's all the hurt I can take, and her actions are telling me that she doesn't want to be with me anymore. I told her that if we were to continue to be together, she would have to promise me that she would never do something like this again, to which she replied she honestly can't. I'm not delusional, I know there is an extremely high possibility that I don't have all the facts and that more happened between the two of them. I try not to think about the things that I don't know and focus on the facts but it's easier said than done. She confessed that they sent photos back and forth to each other, but claims they were innocent. This morning found nude photos of her that we sent to him a few days before she left to see him. I don't know where to go from here. I've read a few pieces on this forum and hearing others discuss similar situations has helped, but I am just so lost and clueless about what I should do. I still love her and want to be with her more than anything, but I don't know if I actually can and put myself at risk again. I don't show my emotions often or well, but this has broken me down to nothing and I see no end in sight for the pain that I am in.
I don't know what I am asking for or what I'm in search of, but it at least helped to write everything out and potentially get some insight from people who have been through this or similar situations. Thank you for taking the time to read. I'm sorry it was so long. I appreciate everyone's replies so far, and I think I'm going to start by return home this evening and packing my things. I've got a place I can stay in my hometown that is safe and I can use to figure things out. Most of you are telling me that it's over or not worth our. I believe that I have become codependent over this relationship and I need to realize what that means and how it affects my decisions moving forward. Although we are young, we have been through more trials and tribulations than most young couples or couples in general. She had a shitty childhood, to which I basically rescued her from. She lost her father to a terrible situation recently that absolutely shook her to her core, and I have been there through all of it, helping her heal and process things. I know I should probably talk to a professional at some point about all of this to try to work it out properly in a healthy way, and I'll look into getting some help. I don't need someone to come in here and tell me that there's still a chance because even though there is, it would probably be pretty emotionally irresponsible of me to go down that road. Thanks everyone for reaching out and sharing insight. It has really helped me deal with the past few days. I would like mention that at this point I do think that I have been told everything. She admitted that their affair was physical, didn't try to downplay what happened. She also started admitting and talking to her family about what happened while also not minimalizing her actions. This was all without me asking for or mentioning it. Me packing my stuff and telling her I'm moving out really must have shocked her system because I see a complete change in her view on this whole situation. I will do my best to try to not get lulled into a false sense of security, but I can't help but to think that she is starting to understand and accept responsibility for what she's done and begun to understand what she put us through. This is a huge step in the right direction if in fact I do decide to attempt or doesn't make the decision any easier, but it does make me feel better and boost my self-worth confidence. Is on a long road to recovery? We did go on a date last night, which we really haven't done in a while. Ate dinner, had some drinks talked about things openly, cried, laughed, hugged, cuddled in bed, L made out like we hadn't in too long. May or may not have had really good SX when we came back. I had a feeling deep down that what I was doing was wrong, but the feeling of comfort and safety that it gave me was much needed. I guess I felt like a drug addict taking another hit. I knew what I was doing was overall not healthy, but the short-term gratification of feeling good outweighed my conscience. Okay, it's my turn to say it like so many before me have. You guys were right about pretty much everything. I know everything that has happened, every excruciating detail. I took the risk last night of reading their messages to each other over the past week and I nearly threw up. But it taught me a valuable lesson. She doesn't love me anymore. She's given up on our relationship. She isn't the person I once knew. I'm gone. I left. Got the ring back even though I don't want the f***ing thing. I'm headed back for my hometown where I will do my best to stay positive and try to recover. I just wanted you all to know that even though you possibly didn't want to be right, you were. I'm going to do my best to make it a clean break, no contact. I need to go up there another time or two to gather the rest of my things, but I will try to do so at a time she is not there. I took no pictures or really any personal items that would remind me of her. I plan on looking into some of the literature that was recommended to me by some of you all, and if I feel the need, I will update or post in the forum. I'm young and have a long life ahead of me. It's time for me to figure out who I am and in turn where I want to be in the coming years. I can't imagine looking for another partner right now. I'm not in the right place mentally, but I'm sure that will change. I'm going to try and focus on myself and attempt to provide myself with all of the emotional support and care that I have been given by her for the last 11 years. Here's to a long, dark, perilous road ahead of me. Story 4 Sai Caught wife's sting and my heart is shattered. How do people cope between the present and start of therapy? This is long, read if you want. Me 51 male spouse, 46 female. Together about 23 years, married for nearly 20. Two great kids. Throughout my adult life I have suffered from bouts of depression and anxiety. It's simply something I have learned to live with through medication and therapy. 
My wife has had bouts of anxiety and depression herself, but on the balance has tended to be a more positive person than me. This mix has resulted in ups and downs in our ability to be intimate. Whether it's straight up SX or the simpler things like cuddling, holding hands, etc., my job was very high travel and high stress. We had a major transition three years ago moving country with the same high stress job for me and I became the only salary in the family after the transition since my wife decided to do a master's. These three years, our intimacy really bottomed out. I will own my share of responsibility for that. This past year, I was made redundant, but we had the financial ability to weather it until I landed a new job six months later. Understandably, that six months was a pretty awful period. Though we got by, the money wasn't going to last forever. Thus, I was far more stressed and depressed while job hunting and gave even less attention to my wife than during previous visits from the black dog. She did communicate how unhappy she was about this, but I figured she understood how stressed I was and needed to get a job to keep us afloat. Landed the job, about two months into it now, and so felt things were de-stressing and turning around. But I started have weird. Intuitions about my wife. Small, subtle things. Like the way her lips felt when I kissed her and how she deflected my attempts to plan ways for us to reconnect on a more intimate level example, a hotel escape for the night. Things came to a strange head about four nights ago when she went out for a bite to eat and drink on her own. This was nothing particularly unusual, but she was unusually coy about the whole thing when she finally got home. Wherever the feeling came from, something told me to check her phone. So, when she was in the shower three days ago, I checked and sure enough, she's been sexting with someone she met online gaming. It was as graphic as you can imagine in terms of images and messages. Felt like being punched in the gut while being run through the heart with a hot, steel blade from behind. When she got out of the shower, I asked if about the previous night at the bar and if there was anything she wanted to tell me. She looked a little baffled, I pressed, and then finally asked, who is? She knew I knew. A bit of a blur now trying to remember how we talked about it, but she was. I feel like a piece of shit. I know I did a horrible thing. I feel awful. Don't want to break up our family. She said she'd delete it all, cut off contact, block the number. Whatever. Claims this is the one and only time it happened. I really broke down, and though she was upset, no real breakdown like me. I asked if she still loved me, and got the line almost out of a movie, of course I still love you, but I'm not there romantically with us anymore. It had been going on for about three months, which means it was while I was still going through the stress of finding a job and then starting that job. I feel sick. Have had a few awful sleeps. Hard to focus at the new job. She did have a breakdown two days ago with one of our mutual friends, but whenever I talk to her about how painful this is, I don't get the kind of emotional response from her I would have imagined given this situation. To add salt to the wound. She has a trip on the books to visit some friends in a couple months. Again, not unusual. Throughout all our years together, we have often gone on solo trips. However, one of the messages to the AP she mentioned the trip and the dates. Of course, she claimed she really wasn't going to meet with him, but I just don't believe that if I hadn't uncovered all this, it was a real possibility for this to be even worse. Had a soul-bearing talk with her yesterday. Again, I felt raw and open, but didn't get the same sense or acknowledgement of the pain she causes from her. She points out her reaction to trauma is numbness for while this is true, but still. I tell her I'm now not happy about this solo trip now, but she's less than enthusiastic about me wanting her to cancel it. There are a number of other people involved in it as well. Just about everyone I've talked to thinks at a minimum, for her to go through with the trip is somewhat tone deaf. At worst, how can I trust anymore? She reiterated she didn't want to see our family break up and agreed to go to couples therapy, but I don't know if she is really genuine or not. I have some great friends I can lean on who are keeping me sane for the moment. She has acknowledged what she did is 100% her fault decision, but also frames it in, there were needs I wasn't getting and I was afraid to confront you again because I felt I was just holding you tight to keep you from going over the edge. Well, we're over the edge now. 
It's early days, so everything is very raw still. Just trying to cope with this searing, steel blade in my heart at the moment. At the same time, I'm coping with the conflict that I do love her and fighting the muscle memory of reflexively wanting to give her a hug coming home or when leaving or other simple acknowledgments of affection I'd routinely do because I feel doing that would kind of normalizes the situation. I don't want our lives together or our family to end like this, so I will do the therapy. Between now and therapy, how do people cope? The ultimate irony. She is a counselor and doing a further, advanced degree in it. Sigh. Thank you. It feels kind of the same as when I've lost people close to me. There are strange periods of time where things seem normal and you simply forget the whole thing. It never happened. And then reality comes crushing back. I do have my own therapist. Fortunately have for years. Ironically, I just cut back to twice a month from almost weekly but re-upped it again. Told him he was going to earn his copay thank you all. We had another discussion tonight. She did seem far more remorseful. She has agreed to cancel the trip. We'll see. She has broken off all contact with the OP. Working on understanding the barbs. But then she did the usual trying to pull it back to the summer when she said she told me how bad things were for her and I did shit about it. I tried to hold my ground and pouting out that one didn't justify the other. I don't know if that got through or not. I do appreciate the strong views. Things are simply so raw right now and it's earlier days that I don't think I can go down the lawyer path right now. But it's going to be a real struggle to get through the holidays. Neither of us is from the area where we currently live so we're hosting Christmas Eve for our group of neighborhood friends and then on Christmas Day our family is joining another close set of family friends for Christmas Day dinner. I don't know how I'm going to fake it to get through all of that. In a way it's easier than spending it with family because I think my brain would blow a fuse watching her happily interact with them my family loves her. As I mentioned, we have two kids one with mental health issues of their own so I want to keep things stable. But can anyone share insight on how to cope during this period where it's expected to be social and festive? Thanks.